Hello subscribers. Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to actually kind of document a piece of software I used to use a long time ago in the early 90s in the DOS days. So it's a compression program and it's called HAP and PAW. H-A-P and then P-A-H. It was created by someone named Harold Feldman and his company was Hammersoft. And I know he was in another country. I'm in the United States. I can't remember if he was from Denmark or where he was from. But I actually paid for this software because I enjoyed it so much. It had really good compression rates for the time. It would be PK zip most of the time and even ARJ which was a pretty darn good compression program so anyway I was going to show it here and I had created a folder that has a bunch of files in it and I want to show you what happens when DOSBox tries to use it now let me show you something else here real quick you'll notice that it's registered to the immortal so that was my bulletin board system alias in the time. I had my own bulletin board system. I was in high school. My parents got me a second phone line and I had it on after school. So that was kind of interesting and fun thing to do when you're a high school student. Okay, so enough of that. Let's go ahead and do some compression here. I'm just going to do all the files in this directory. And I'm going to speed up the process a little bit here so that you can see what happens faster. So as you can see, it's doing its thing. And there we go. It actually just crashed. Let me see if I can get the... There we go so you can see it. So, HAP takes down DOSBox, which I thought was pretty funny. So, what I'm going to do is show you in an emulator. Well, it's technically not an emulator. It's a virtual, virtual machine, so it's virtualized. And here it works. So, I'm using VMware, and... Here we have HAP again. So let me make a folder and copy all the same files into that folder. And we'll run it again. As you can see, it goes right past the error it had before. So there's something that this program does that DOSBox can't handle. It's not very often that you can actually see DOSBox crash. So I thought that was an interesting thing. But one other thing to point out is if you look at the verbiage here, it says updating method and it says learning. And then once it has compressed the file, it says learned. And of course it shows you the file name the original size and the size after it's been compressed. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video so that I can fly through this folder and I'll show you the end result. And then we'll compare it to PKZip and ARJ and see how it does. And these are executable and document files, mainly executables, which are very difficult to compress. So we will see how it does just wanted to show you, I zoomed in a little bit more so you could see more, but it does have a stored method here as well, I noticed. So basically it couldn't compress those files, so it actually just stored them. Okay, so let's see how it did. So the original size was, it appears to be 10 megabytes roughly, and it cut it down to 7. And again, these are highly uncompressible files because a lot of them are already compressed. 
there's the file. So 719, just remember that. Next, we're going to use pkzip if it'll let us. Let's see. So we want to add and we want to try to do extra compression. So we want ex. pkzip add ex. I think that's how you did it. If it's going to work, oh, it is a slash, okay. Hmm. Doesn't look like it's going to build execute. Okay, well, let's try ARJ because it actually does better than zip does anyway. So we're going to add archive, add files to the archive. And does this have a compression rate? It has a method that can be used, but I don't see where you set the compression level. So we'll just add all that and we'll do test.arj. And I will be back once it is finished. Okay, so let's see how the ARJ compression utility did. Wow, it did about the same. Well, HAP obviously isn't as good against executables. Let me see if I can dig up something that's more compressible, and that'll be a better comparison. Okay, I found two things to test this against. One is a very large, basically, text file. It's got a whole bunch of text in it. So let's do a hap on this. Which will take quite a while <laughs> because this is a 34 megabyte file essentially. So I will come back after it finishes. Okay, so hap clocked in at 10.9 megabytes essentially. So it cut it from 34 roughly to about 10. So we'll go ahead and have ARJ do its thing. Uh, let me double check the instructions on it again. So it's just an A. It did take HAP quite a while to compress down to that. But in the day, when you had a 2400 baud modem, you could actually spend, you know, 20 minutes compressing something on your local computer that's large and still save a lot of time transmitting a huge file over a 2400 baud modem. A lot of people today that weren't around during that time, just will have a hard time understanding that, but that's just how slow modems were at the time. So I'll go ahead and come back once this finishes. Okay, and we'll see what ARJ clocked in as. So once again, ARJ actually is about the same as HAP, plus it did it much faster so this file was pretty much text. So as you can see, HAP is not living up to the expectations that I originally thought it would be. So let's go ahead and try a, one more test here. These are some large DLLs that have a lot of empty space in them. This is actually the movie, movie Maker program that I use to edit my videos when I do game reviews. So I'll be back. Okay, so HAP did pretty well here. It went from 27 megabytes down to about 10. So now we'll see how ARJ does. All right, so ARJ produced a file that once again was 
9.6 megabytes in size. So, after these tests, I'm actually kind of surprised that ARJ seems to be about the same, if not a little better than HAP, and it's much faster. Back in the old DOS days, it seems when I used HAP, it was better. That's why I actually paid for it. But you live and you learn. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.